Happy Tuesday, YouTube. Happy Tuesday, everyone. And the eating you can hear is from none other than Milan Jeffrey. Man, literal baby back ribs are amazing. <laughs> What's the Russian for baby back ribs? Food. <laughs> <laughs> Okay then. Well, since since you've already just heard from Milan, I'll go in reverse order and and also introduce Cokie Pirate. Hello, hello. What's the Spanish for baby back ribs? Um, cosillas. I don't know if there's a special word for baby back ribs. We would just say cosillas ribs. Ah, okay. Uh, you James. Uh, what's the Yorkshire for baby back ribs? Tasty lad. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay then. So enough levity because we've all just uh, watched a video linked in the description, designed in a nutshell to uh, to tell you average Joe such as myself what the fuck is this Iraq situation anyway. Um, and and yes, depressing from the outset. Uh, and and how about yes? Because you assumed everything was okay because you hadn't heard anything for a while. Um, <sighs> So, going in the same order then, um, uh, Milan, I don't know if you, your views on the whole thing, uh, if you really have more of an insight, if your view is different after than it would be before, but uh, please, anybody listening, please do go and uh, watch this video. Um, but uh, Milan, um, Iraq. Lol, genocide. Oh, well, it's a thing. It's certainly a giant, um, a giant circle jerk of violence, uh, you know, inter-terrorist warship, and old, fucked up, medieval, um, religious, um, control. And, um, I think there was a man who once said, um, that, well, I'm gonna be crass here and, and, and just say that the fucking, you know, if the, if, I don't know. It's just, if they got the jinn to finally, to, to actually agree to fight the Americans, at least it would have been a stable power base. Right. You know, because they actually, um, uh, it, was a, it was a joke. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain my jinn, joke. And ex jinn as in genies, as in rubbing the magic lamp. Yes, yes, uh, that's right. Because yeah. at, at some point... There was actually, you know, some of the uh, military elites actually considered uh, asking the jinn for help and militarizing them. But, of course, they did not exist, so that made it kind of difficult, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, essentially, I, I was being silly, but, yeah, it, there's nothing really to say. It's just, it's a giant clusterfuck of violence. I, I wanted to tell the tape before the word clusterfuck came in. I knew you used it myself. Uh, Koki, the Iraq clusterfuck. Well, yes, uh, kind of like uh, Milan said, things would be a lot simpler if, um, you know, things like jinn or benevolent gods existed. But, um, goodness, uh, I mean, the thing is that a lot of the division between um, Iraq, you know, the Sunni-Shia divide, the problem is that it's regionally divided as well. You know, we gave that example or the map, it showed a map of how it's, um, they've been living, you know, in segregated matters. Um, how would Iraq have formed, uh, you know, if it weren't the British Empire and the French Empire deciding, let's divide it here, let's divide it here, they'll sort it out. You know, um, uh, a exactly. lot of this... Hmm? Exactly. Iraq and Iran were literally created by the stroke of a pen. North and South Korea were created by a stroke of, the stroke of a pen, and now, decades later, we are still dealing with the fallout of these arbitrary, asinine decisions. Bloody yeah. foreigners can't get, can't, can't even bloody get their own, can't even, no, they can't even deal with us white men taking care of them. We leave, leave them with our time, you know, they can't do anything themselves, fucking <laughs> foreigners. Now I'm just imagining like someone drawing a line in the middle of the street and then suddenly people are fighting with one another from each side. But um, no, a lot of this is fighting within the lines because the lines, they were drawn somewhat arbitrarily. You know, this was the British Empire. They, they thought that would be a nice sort of square area for them to rule. Um, and of course, oil and other resources played a factor. And let's not forget the Cold War, which did a real number on Iraq. 
and um, perhaps one of the more moderate forces, uh, the Arab Christians, were completely, pretty much scared away and did a mass exodus from the country um, after, you know, the engagements in the Middle East following September 11th. So things are really bad. Things are really divided. I mean, that goes without saying. Um, something that always kind of bothered me was, um, you know, it's like, could it have been inaction that is responsible for this? Could we have done something, either in Iraq or in Syria, to have prevented this? But at the same but, time, uh, even if we could have, would it have been worth it? You, uh, uh, James, sounds like you have something to say about the Iraq situation. Bitch, please. The reason why the Middle East is as fucked up as it is is that America has spent the last fucking century cu- fucking with the entire region. From um, installing the Shah of Iran, uh, oppressing the Shia minority. I'm sorry, it was Saddam. I was talking about Iran there. I was going to go through a whole list, but yes, the CIA CIA installing Saddam Hussein. Uh, We love love to uh, show, the the Americans love to show uh, videos of um, Saddam shaking hands with different people. They didn't show him shaking hands with Donald Rumsfeld in 1983, Mm -hmm. who sold chemical weapons to be used against the Iranians in the Iran-Iraq war. We, (coughs) if America had stayed the fuck out of the Middle East, if if they weren't so utterly obsessed, with um, controlling the world's oil supply, which again is, um, after all, is the only reason why they invaded in 2003, for at least the principal reason. Uh, then, um, then uh, the situation would have been so much better. The West interfering with the Middle East is the reason why it is so fucked. Just to blame this on religion is to be totally ignorant of the fact that when all is said and done, it is ultimately about power. The, again, the Shias under the Sunni, Sunni rule under Saddam Hussein had no power. Now it's the other way around. And uh, uh, with the political vacuum created, rogue, rogue thugs car- carving out random spheres of influence... Uh, terrorist organizations like ISIS have begun to seize control. And again, religion is an excuse. At the end of the day, it is, it, you know, whether it's, no matter what the situation, it is always one ape's ability to impose its will upon another ape. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, I just want to get clear. Do you genuinely believe that everything would be happy, fun times no, no, in Iraq had there been... No, 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 I'm just like wondering, because you're saying the cause of this is U.S. involvement. And I, I will admit that U.S. involvement... Well, not that I have any investment, by the way, but it's certainly... To, to say, to say, that, to say but, that I... To, in, to, in, to assert that I said anything like the world, the Middle East would be perfect if America hadn't interfered. Thing, things are as bad as they are. There would still be problems, just as there are problems all over the world, but things like um, the fact that Iran had a democratic... that things like Iran had a democratically elected prime minister before they des- decided to drive him out in, of office and impose a puppet dictator. Things like um, if uh, you were to go to Afghanistan or Iran in the 1970s, you would see unveiled women wearing western clothes okay they would have been they would have worn long sleeves even in the height of summer and the skirts would have been a bit longer now they all exclusively wear burqas because of precisely because of the backlash against the american attempts to impose um western values to to quote <coughs> westernize 
the Middle East. This was the entire basis of the Iranian revol. This was the entire basis of the Iranian Revolution. Uh, the Shah's troops going through the streets, ripping the veils off uh, Shia women's heads, is not exactly going to get a calm and rational response from the Shia from the Shia population. And yes, likewise, um, where after be, after decades of being persecuted and oppressed by the Shias, the Sh uh, by the Sunnis, the Shias are now having their moment in the sun, turning around doing exactly the same things to the Sunnis, and the rise of groups like ISIS is the result. It's. <sighs> But at the end of the day, uh, getting ju just Tony Blair insisting that any attempts to connect the invasion of 2003 uh, with the current situation in Iraq as being bizarre, the only explanation that I can come up with is that he's trying to come up with he's trying to come up with some kind of legal defense against any uh, charges of the that he might be tried for, you know, crime, uh, uh, crimes against humanity, at, uh, violations of international law, by by um, appearing mentally incompetent. <laughs> 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 he is trying to act as insane, as deluded, and as completely out of touch as possible, so as to avoid any kind of <laughs> legal repercussion. He, um, well, yeah. I don't think he's acting, you know, I think it's just how he naturally is, and that's a little bit more, a little even more terrifying. No, you know, no, incompetence I, is I'm one obvious, thing, but... Obviously, this is the guy who, this is one of the guys who honestly believes that Iraq was directly, believed that Iraq was directly responsible for 9-11, and that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, that Saddam Hussein... But Osama bin Laden were best buddies and all of that bullshit and went to war on that basis. So, yes, his grip on sanity and reality is not exactly uh, rock solid. Uh, okay, Koki, it sounded like you were going to say something. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I guess, you know, on Tony Blair's remark, it's pretty clear he's just trying to cover his own rear. Um, that being said, sometimes I genuinely do wonder if it would have been an Assad... Um, Syria situation in Iraq with Saddam, you know, because it was basically a minority rule. Um, could it have happened you earlier? Have to, could it have happened later? Yeah, and again, you have to remember the uh, Saddam would never have come to power if the CIA hadn't backed him all the way. I mean, how <laughs> far back are we going to go? None of these problems would exist if um, it weren't for that treaty that the British made with the French. Or what about exactly. the Turks? Or what which, about the... which is my entire <laughs> fucking point. The West, not just America, but the West has a great deal to up. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, because wasn't it the British who installed the Iranian puppet dictator, having got rid of the democratically elected one? Uh, de uh, democratically elected leader. I hope that was the British, not the Americans. Mm. Uh, it's it's um, difficult to say who is directly responsible, but let us just <clears throat> use the blanket term the West. Okay. We, the West, like, bloody white people. It's, oh. it's not <laughs> like the Ottoman Empire were saying to this either. I, I don't know. Other powers, obviously. The world oh, yes, has the problem of being populated by humans, basically. Oh, uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire wasn't saints, weren't saints either, but after the First World War, the, you know, um, that's the thing. They were, they did, were left to um, dis decide their own fate, self-determination, to quote uh, President Woodrow Wilson. But uh, that, that, that was never applied outside of Europe, <laughs> Uh, peoples were not allowed to create their own nation states, and we are still dealing with the fallout of that to this day. That's actually interesting that you bring up Woodrow Wilson up because he had that exact same critique about the way the British and French were um, dividing uh, Syria and Iraq. It's kind of strange to me that it's, you know. Every time the Middle East gets brought up, and this is coming from someone who really doesn't give two fucks about the Middle East at all, 
it's just like, you know, the West did its business and it kind of fucked everything up, but the Middle East wasn't exactly a stable place to begin with. And I'm not saying, oh, the, the, they would have, it would have devolved into a place of horror and terror if the white man wasn't even involved. I'm just saying it's just, it's, you know, historically, ha what should happen, happened. I'm not, so, like, I'm more concerned of, uh, I'm more interested in what we're going to do now. Should we completely stay out and let, you know, the Iranians do what, you know, do, you know, do what they're going to do and try to solve their own problems or the problems, you know, the West cost for them? Or should we go back in and try, what the fuck is going on? I would say, um, haven't we had our fingers burnt enough ties? But the distinction in this instance is that um, America, America's help specifically, has actually been requested. Yes. Oh, okay. Again, with you know, only, they've only just gotten out of Iraq, and now they're being asked to uh, make, make strikes, even just airstrikes against ISIS. And uh, yeah, as yeah. far as as far as I'm aware, Obama just could not be less interested. We only just got the fuck out of there. Yeah, we yeah. Are... yeah. I, mean, I mean, like ultimately... once you see, <coughs> sorry, once you see how good the Americans are, you know, the Americans have a skill uh, at you know blowing up brown people. At least this time, they'll be blowing up the right people. But you know, Americans, when you need them to kill brown people, they're not there. But when you know, you know, I mean, ultimately, what should be done is what would ensure the most stability in the long run. And this does sound like a bit of a mess. Um, you know, some people have even talked about like dividing Iraq up between Sunni, Shia, and Kurds. I don't know. I'm not a military strategist. Um, but, maybe it might be best that we stay out of it. Yeah. It does look bad if the United States turns a deaf ear. After everything is that it's done to destabilize Iraq, to say, oh yeah, now we're not going to help. But at the same time, sometimes that might be the best option. Mm. The, the problem there is uh, that one of the reasons why America stayed in Iraq as long as it did, and um, the, the re one of the reasons why Iraq is so fucked up, is precisely because um, America fears the Shia uh, majority areas of Iraq uh, joining with Iran and possibly even Syria to form a Shia superstate with control of oil. Why are we there? Oil. Why does anyone give a flying fuck about Iraq and Iran? Oil. Why did why did Amer why did America fund and supply a genocidal war against Iran rather than risk uh, its enemy controlling um, contr controlling uh, a vast swathe of the Middle East. Oil. Why did we why did America and Britain and to a lesser extent Spain and a couple of other countries invade Iraq in 2003? Oil. As long as the world is dependent on oil, uh, the <laughs> Iraq will be a fucking war zone. And as uh, unfortunately, as oil becomes increasingly scarce, the violence is going to get worse. But uh, as to the whole question of what we should. Uh, to what we should be doing as much as I am horrified and disgusted uh, by the, the, by what is happening in Iraq, as much as I wish we could do something, as I think each of us agree, uh, fingers have been burned. It has been proven time and time again. We can go in. The, America can go in there and kill all the brown people. It can. It's not going to help anything in the long run. When all is said and done, the prime directive, to quote Star Trek, to reference Star Trek, has to apply. Um, if yeah, yes, there would yes, there would undoubtedly have been uh, chaos after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, 
But if tribes and religious factions and so forth had been had been granted self determination, if they had been allowed to form their own nation states and so forth as they were in Europe, uh, as nations were in Europe after the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, then the chaos, uh, much of the chaos of the bloodshed and the political wrangling of the last uh, hundred years could have been avoided. But no, uh, the Middle East has a resource which we want to, which we need to exploit at all costs. So... (sighs) Yep, that's pretty much it. I, I'm not sure if it's um, as simple as going in there to get the oil. At least in terms of trying to get the oil, destabilizing Iraq doesn't seem like the right way to go about it. If that's oh, really again, what the goals are. When we're talking about Tony Blair, George W. Bush, greedy psychopaths who ran corporations, specifically Dick Cheney. Um, uh, who, who had massive, co- sorry, not ran, had major connections with corporations, specifically uh, Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, and um, psychopathic military hawks such as Donald Rumsfeld. These people aren't exactly great strategists. They don't, they're not uh, the sharpest pencils in the box. <laughs> they they believed that they were going to secure Iraq. They honestly believed that all they had to do was just depose Saddam Hussein, declare victory, go home, and the oil would flow. That's why they never created a post-invasion plan. That, you know, know, they didn't give a shit about the brown people, too. Yeah, as as long as the oil fields were secure, the, the, the Iraqis could continue murdering each other. The problem is they started targeting American troops, American facilities, and oil wells as well. Uh, and they, um, yes, p- politicians in Iraq, whether or not you have power as a politician, depends on the size of your own personal militia. Uh, because um, all of the political, many of the political leaders in Iraq are also tribal, are, have connections to the tribes, and uh, it's we we meaning Britain and America went into Iraq with absolutely no fucking clue what we were doing. George Bush, people like George Bush and Tony Blair had seen Star Wars far too many times, just blow up the death just blow up the death, <laughs> death star, kill the Emperor and everyone lives happily ever after. And the Ewoks have a party. Exactly. Fucking Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'll open up the floor if anybody um wants to add anything. Um you know, just to make light on this really serious, you know, uh, situation or discussion to be, uh, I would, I would rather pay to see, you know, I would risk, you know, inter Ewok genocide after after war because, you know, you know, Ewoks killing each other is a little bit more entertaining than, you know, humans doing that. Probably uh, not to an Ewok. Um, <laughs> but you know they're brown and furry, so who gives a shit? I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to say that involvement is bad on a categorical level. You know, in this case, I don't know. I genuinely do not know enough to know if it's a good idea. Um, I, I just the whole prime directive logic that um, there's no way we could conceivably reduce the suffering, or there's no way we could conceivably end the violence. Oh, we, there, there is undoubtedly a way, but not when... Um, the, but first of all, A, could A could we apply it, and B, would America want to apply it? Given all of the, mili- of the militaristic and corporate uh, in, uh, uh, 
motivations, desires, greed involves, given our track record, is is there any way that we could do it without just making things worse? O- overall, our best option, as much as it fucking not pains me, agonizes me. All that we can do is is take the prime directive road because because uh, yes, if his if history has taught us anything, it's that <laughs> no, any country invading or attempting to apl- in, in attempting to Im- attempting to Im- impose its uh, will upon the Middle East uh, just makes things worse and gets its fingers burned. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's no objection, I think it's time to go around and have final thoughts and goodbyes. So, uh, Milan, your final thought and goodbye. I've made myself sound like a complete and utter ignorant ass throughout this episode, and for that, I am sorry. <sighs> okay, and Koki? May the hamster of stability through strength smile upon the Middle East. <sighs> uh, James? May the great holy donkey forgive us all, for we know not what we do. And on that bombshell, uh, thank you for listening, folks. And uh, maybe the next topic will be a little bit lighter. Until then, good night, YouTube. Good night, everyone. Farewell.